Hi guys and welcome to our video review of the 2016 Audi RS7, wait for it, Performance. It's like the regular RS7 but with the performance dialed up to 11 and that's on a dial of 1 to 10. So how have they done that? They took the same 4 litre V8 by turbo and they tweaked the turbos, the engine management system and the exhaust valves to take the power up from 560 to 605 brake horsepower. You get the same 516 pounds foot of torque but you get up to 553 pounds foot on overboost. That'll give you a 0 to 100 kilometers per hour acceleration time of 3.7 seconds. That's two tenths quicker than before and actually a tenth quicker than the Mercedes AMG GTS, a supercar. It's also on par with the Charger Hellcat. And it will hit 200 kilometers per hour in just 12.1 seconds and has a top speed of 250, 280 or even 305 kilometers per hour depending on which option box you tick. It has the same 8-speed Tiptronic automatic with paddle shifts that we know it has quattro all-wheel drive with 60% of the torque going to the back wheels. It also has a sports rear differential and torque vectoring and you get a choice of adaptive suspension or sports suspension. It's visually quite hard to tell the difference between the Performance and the regular RS7. There are tweaks to the front bumper air intakes and to the rear diffuser. You get 21-inch rims and you also get these sports seats. The price for this is 511600 dirhams which works out to about $140,000. That seems quite pricey but frankly there is just nothing else like this. Okay anyway enough chattering I think it's time to take this for a drive. Right so there is the uh, auto start coming back on again and uh, what mode are we in? Now good, one of the good things about this car is normally you have to go through the screen don't the MMI system to get to the drive select on Audi's. Now this one's actually got a drive select button right here on the dashboard. So I can see press, by pressing this button I can see I'm already in dynamic. So let's leave it in dynamic. Let's accelerate. That's zero pretty much and uh, we are we're doing 100. That's it. We're doing 100. Oh my god. I mean it is phenomenal and that's on a, on a little bit of a curve going uphill in very hot weather. We're talking 44 degrees centigrade today. And um, this is, I mean, I've driven these before and they are stupendous. You know, I've driven the RS7 at its original launch a couple of years ago and I drove the, um, the RS6 Avant, which I loved, which was just a slightly anarchic because it's a big, comfortable, uh, luxury estate car for the family that shames supercars. And that's the thing with these cars, they shame supercars, that's what they do. And even on this twisty little road where really it should be a little bit out of its depth because it's, you know, it's a, it's a sizable thing, but... And just look at that, just look at that. And it just, it makes such a great noise as well, as well. Uh, so I am in dynamic, yes I am. So we're in full dynamic, including the suspension. Now admittedly the suspension is a little bit brittle uh, in dynamic and... Uh, and I can see that camera that I'm looking at here is wobbling about a little bit, so uh, that's probably why that's happening. There are 21 inch rims on these things, but the grip is stu stupendous, as, as I can see on this corner here, just turning in on the throttle, and uh, let's punch it out of this corner. Unbelievable, look at that. Good brakes as well, I mean really, the anchors are fantastic and they give you a lot of confidence. The, right, the, the grip and the, the brakes are absolutely fantastic. It's turning into this, look at this, you know, very little understeer to speak of, just when you really push it, you know, when you're in the apex and you're back on the throttle and you push it, you start to detect that understeer, but frankly, in the corner, very little. And, um, you know, one suspects that if I had more room and a little bit more confidence, I could push through the understeer and, and the car would be quite faithful with that grip and with the torque vectoring and the magic voodoo stuff that the suspension does. The only trouble is that the steering, whilst it's nice and weighty and uh, fairly accurate, and I've got it on sports, of course, as the way I like it, um, there isn't quite enough feel. So there's just that slight lack of confidence where you're just wondering if, you know, will it, won't it, will it, it will. Oh, but you know you just need that extra reassurance in your head don't you especially when you're on roads like this um, and doing these sort of speeds but it's fantastic I mean the grip is unbelievable and it sounds good thanks to the uh, the sport exhaust and it does not hearing it on this run but on the previous run there was a lot of you know uh, overrun fuel overrun on the exhaust just parping and banging away like a mental rally car remember you know, four-door, comfortable, luxury uh, saloon 
decent boot space, massive boot space actually, a big old hatch at the back and uh, comfortable rear seats as well, plenty of space back there as well. Again, great anchors, just pulls it on, change of surface, dives into the corner, into that dip there, change of direction here, no issues, round we go. I'm not using the paddles because I'm talking to you, but the paddles are very, very good, very responsive, very quick to respond. Um, it, it's just, maybe if I use the paddles, I might get that, that parping, let's see. So let's go back down into third, and uh, here we are. Third gear, let me see, okay, here we go, accelerating, let's break into this corner. Third is, it's in second, third, yeah, third is good enough. Okay, I'm not getting the parping that I was getting before, but believe me, it's there. Um, but instant response to the paddle shift's not a problem, you know. I do wish it's got a heads-up display, an optional heads-up display in this car, which is very, very handy, um, especially to keep an eye on your speed. But I do wish the gear, the gear uh, indicator was also in there because I have to keep looking down and trying to remember where on the instrument panel the actual indicator is, which is slightly inconvenient. So if it was up there in the heads-up, that would be so much better, wouldn't it? But uh, and how about the ride then? The ride, well, I think the ride is very, very good. It's got adaptive uh, air suspension, and I think this particular car is equipped with the adaptive suspension. And that, of course, gives it a very, very smooth ride, even on these 21-inch uh, rims. And um, most of the time, I keep the drive select an individual, where I keep the ride on comfort, because whilst it's good in this sort of environment, it can get a little bit brittle. Um, also, fantastic stereo system from Banger Lufsen as well. Just mentioned that briefly. But what I was going to say about the ride was that although this is the more comfortable option, um, I remember when I drove the RS7 first time round, um, I preferred the sport suspension to the adaptive suspension. Um, yes, it was a little bit harder, a little bit firmer, but it had a kind of frenetic energy about it, a kind of uh, slightly mental uh, attitude where you did really feel like you know you were pushing on in that car and uh, and that was kind of satisfying so I would suggest going for that one uh, just be aware when you're ticking the option though to make sure you get the sports exhaust which is what this car has got and which sounds absolutely fantastic um, so there we have it there's our run in this car uh, incredible speed incredible performance too much performance in fact for a road like that really this car needs big long sweepers and uh, you know do do very fast corners and that sort of stuff this is a, perhaps a little bit tight for it but you know it can perform it can do it it's not an issue for it it's not a problem it can manage all of that without any issue whatsoever and uh, and be entertaining at the same time which of course is crucially important so there you go there's my review of the Audi RS7 performance. Uh, remember the performance bit. Remember, that's what you want to say to the dealer when you go to the showroom. And that's the bit that you're paying the extra money for. And it is well worth it. If you're going to get an RS7, you might as well have a performance. Because you know what? Why not? 605 horsepower. Let us know what you think of the Audi RS7 and, of course, this performance edition. Leave your comments below or elsewhere. Do please catch up with us. We will put a review of this car as well on our website, which is motoringme.com. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We do a lot of stuff on Facebook. Do find us there. Just search for Motoring Middle East in all of these places, including YouTube. And if you're looking at this video on YouTube, then please do like, share, and subscribe that would be much appreciated and keep coming back there's more videos on there do check them out thanks so much for watching until the next one